Josiah. That's my new computer. Let's take a look. All right. There he is. Take a walk around. Might not be totally obvious as to what it is from the outside. Of course, the uh, wood construction is definitely somewhat unusual for a computer. Uh, but I suppose it's somewhat unusual what I was going for. Um, so let's uh, start with the uh, exterior features. Uh, as you can see, it has uh, trunk corners here and here, like you'd have steamer style trunk or for a hope chest or perhaps a big uh, toy box. Um, it's not the only similarity that it has to a toy box, but I'll show you that later. Big leather handle. I had to modify that, unfortunately. Um, but uh, these are the fans that provide the cooling for the computer. Uh, they are 60 millimeter fans. They are a total of 10 of them. It creates a little mini wind tunnel in there. And uh, that, uh, that does pretty good for cooling so far. Um, these are uh, like toolbox type latches here that hold this top box uh, to the rest of it. And it'll become more clear as to how that works when I show you it uh, being opened and put uh, into deployment. All right. So now I'll show you simply how uh, you would uh, actually use this. So you carry it with the handle, of course. Bring it to wherever. Um, basically, uh, <laughs> multiple times during the uh, design of it, had the option of either uh, making it lighter or making it sturdier. I always chose sturdier, so it's 50 pounds when fully loaded. Um, so it's not basicity, but it's definitely portable for people with a little bit of arm on them. Um, so you lift it up, put it down like this, undo the latches on either side, and in here would be where everything goes. Mouse, keyboard, any mouse pads, power cords, things like uh, armrests, um, headphones, etc., etc. Definitely a lot of room in here for those sort of accessories, as well as different charging cords and things like that that I always have with me anyway. Um, so you take that off like that. Set this aside for a moment so that I can open it up. And uh, there it is. This was one of the other features that it has in common with one of those large trunks or toy boxes. This is a torsion hinge. It works on much of the same, um, the same uh, principles and uh, sort of design that uh, laptop hinges use, except for it's much, much, much beefier. Um, uh, so I've got that as the hinge for the top box, uh, where I have some desktop speaker that I hacked apart and put in there. I've got some dogs jumping on the window, uh, and a 21 and a half inch IPS um, monitor in there as well. But I'll show you that stuff more closely uh, once I get the power cord plugged in. Okay, so here it is uh, put together. All you do is you plug in the mouse and the keyboard or whatever you want there, headphones and all that sort of thing. Uh, here, uh, I'll show you inside in a bit. Um, and uh, here's where you plug in the power cord. It just uses a standard extension cord, like you would have here, three prongs in the United States. Um, and uh, so, uh, as you see, I just got uh, an old cheap Roswell thing here and a 
I tried the Rosewell Laser Mouse, um, but it ended up being crap. This keyboard is pretty good, though, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I've got a DVD drive in here, and uh, this is a salvaged power and restart, restart uh, switch with power and hard drive lights. Uh, this is a closer look at the hinges back here. And uh, then these are the ca cables that go between the base and the top. And also here is the uh, controls for the amplifier for these speakers. Uh, and an auxiliary um, then amplified head a headphone <coughs> jack there. Um, but yeah, maybe I should uh, open it up before turning it on. So I'm just going to set these aside. I don't know why the dog has to wait till I'm recording to start barking. So I've got the screws off of there, of course. These have countersunk screws that would normally be in there when it's fully complete and ready to be moved around. And... Um, uh, so yes, this is the current state of the interior, and um, this is a micro ATX. I think it's a AS Rock uh, motherboard. It's got a Intel Ivy Bridge Core i5 3750K. I think they're terrible at naming over there. Um, I mean, they don't even call them Ivy Bridge in their marketing department, which is a real name is what all the nerds call them, so I don't know what the heck they're doing. Uh, but I've got a 60 uh, gigabyte solid state drive, uh, because at the time that was the best deal, uh, and a 2 terabyte, um, I think it's like a Samsung green or something like that. Um, and then this DVD is just out of a salvaged computer with, I had like a fried motherboard or something like that. I don't know. Uh, this is kind of the part that took the longest um, and as far as the electrical portion is concerned. Uh, all, of the, uh, all of the wiring, uh, shortening, uh, routing, etc., etc., to get that in a satisfactory state meant that basically every cable coming out of this power supply had to be shortened, uh, which was quite a bit. Um, but it's a, it's like a Seasonic, I think, 520, um, watt, uh, power supply. And, uh, you know, you're, you're probably thinking, boy, that's kind of overkill. And man, you could have shrunk this thing down if you weren't using, you know, a massive power supply like that. You could probably just get away with a lot of, uh, like maybe even one of those smaller, um, little mini ITX uh, uh, power supplies uh, that go to like a hundred and something watts. And you'd be right, except for this big empty space you see here. <laughs> I bet you can guess what that's for. That's right, a desktop discrete graphics processor. That's what I'm hoping to put it in there soon, and only recently uh, have they actually made something that I would actually want to put in there in the form of the uh, NVIDIA uh, GTX 660 Ti. Um, Zotac in particular has a short one, and I'm hoping that uh, everything works out, and I'll be sticking something like that right in there. Um, I'll be using a. The plan is to use a flex cable uh, from the PCI Express bus there uh, to connect it in there, and uh, hopefully that'll work. <laughs> I haven't really tried anything like that before, but as you can see, these are those 60 millimeter fans. Um, uh, right now, they're wired in such a way where there's no speed control. They just simply go at the rate at which they want to go, 412 volts all the time, um, which for some people would certainly be louder, but for the sort of thing that this would lend itself to, a machine like this, uh, say a LAN party environment, uh, you're not going to hear them anyway. <laughs> so. Uh, not a big deal. 
Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to pop the top back on and uh, start it up and uh, see you in a bit.